Hello and welcome to another entry in the Astrologer's Encyclopedia. My name is Matt. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Uh, today we are going to be discussing Mars. Um, and so my goal for this whole series basically, you know, where we're taking each planet and moving it from Valens as the earliest source all the way through to Ren Butler in 2018 is to help people have like as rich a vocabulary as possible for each and every planet. Um, and so basically what I'm trying to do is get people to think, okay, where can I see this planet in my day-to-day -day life? You know, with Mars, we can see it in things like a red poster, perhaps a person with red hair. We can see it in the person cooking our food. We can see it in the uh, combustion engine of our car, you know, all of these things. So um, making astrology something that we live with day-to-day -day can really help us learn um, how to interpret charts and just like different ways that things will manifest. Uh, so one game that I used to play with a friend and that I really recommend people do is we would just make up a combination of planets. We would say, you know, Mars and Mercury. Um, and then we would try to think of as many things and as many occupations, types of people um, that would apply to that. So if we think of Mars as being like things that are violent or destructive and Mercury as being things that are technological or like technically sophisticated or, um, like clever in some way we could think of like a smoke screen like a smoke bomb or like a missile system or um like a really high-tech stove or oven right so something that contains heat and destructive power as in like a missile or a fire and we can make it technological with mercury or we can think of like covert operations or like pirates or thieves right all mars mercury things um so that's kind of a fun game. And I really uh, just say that to um, remind people that astrology is not just the charts on your computer screen. It's not just the things in your head. It is uh, things in real life. It is um, all around us sort of at all times. So uh, without any further ado, we are gonna get into uh, this talk about Mars. Um, Mars is a dear personal friend of mine. I have a lot, I have a very strong Mars and a lot of planets in Mars's signs. Um, so close friend uh, and I have a night chart. So anyway, uh, table of contents, what we're going to be going over today is uh, some traditional sources. We're going to go over Valens, Firmicus, Abu Mashar, and Lily, as usual. A uh, little discussion of Mars and traditional astrology to kind of sum all that up. And then we're going to take a look at some modern sources, Stephen Forrest, Richard Tarnas, and Ren Butler. Um, these are all like later 20th century sources. I've kind of skipped some of the tradition. Um, but the reason I split it into two sections like this is because of that break in the astrological tradition where there was something fairly continuous. And I say fairly because there was, you know, at least three translation efforts and a lot was lost uh, between them uh, from about first second century bc to lily in the 1600s um and then there's this break with the enlightenment everyone hates astrology and then it really starts to pick up again with these new um like spiritual and theosophical kind of associations towards the end of the 1800s and into the 20th century um and so there is a big difference with mars there's a lot less of a difference than with something like perhaps the sun or uh, the moon um or even Venus, there's there's less of a difference um, here. Uh, but we're going to go over those and then sort of wrap up Mars in modern astrology. And again, like I said at the beginning, what this is really for is it's not to say traditional astrology is better, modern astrology is better. That's not what I'm trying to say. Really, it's to expand our vocabulary and imagine um, more for like how we can deal with Mars, how we can harness the energy of conflict, strife, desire, these kinds of things um and see it all around us and help if we're doing readings help our clients um like really kind of dig deep and understand what's going on how it's affecting them um and so forth so just a quick uh warning i guess for things like violence um sexual violence any kind of violence with mars you're going to get into some pretty nasty stuff um so content warning so starting with uh, Valens, he's our first traditional source. He was writing in Greek uh, in the first century or the second century, maybe. It says, the star of Mars signifies violence, wars, robbery, screams. This is screams. That is my favorite <clears throat> um, signification of, I think, the entire tradition, because it's just like you think of, and you, I mean, even the words we think of to describe like screaming, bloody murder, it's like three Mars words all at once but screams think of like a panicked 
scream or an angry scream or something like that. Um, so anyway, wars, robbery, screams, insolence, adultery, taking away of one's possessions, banishment, exile, estrangement from one's parents, captivity, the rape of women, abortions, sexual intercourse, marriages, loss of good things, lies, hopeless situations, violent thefts, robbery, plundering, separations of friends, anger, fighting, verbal abuse, hatred, and lawsuits. He also brings about violent murders, wounds and bloodshed, attacks of fevers, ulcers, skin eruptions, inflammations, imprisonment, torture, masculinity, kind of another funny one, perjury, deception, those who have much experience in wrongdoing, and those who work with fire or iron, those who work with their hands and masons. He brings about leaders and military service and high-ranking officers, soldiers, sovereignty, like command over oneself or one's nation, right? Um, and like a separateness, sovereignty implies that you are not me, my country is not your country, I have control over this domain and not that one, that kind of a thing. There's like a severing and dividing. Uh, Mars indicates hunting, chasing, falling from heights or from four-footed animals, poor vision, and apoplexy. I looked up this word, I can't... I think it's like fainting um, from like fear or something like that. Um, I can look that up again. If anyone knows, feel free to comment. Of the parts of the body, he rules over the head, excuse me, the buttocks, the genitals. Internally, he rules the blood, the seminal passages, bile, the excretion of feces, the back portion of the individual, walking backwards and falling on one's back. He also rules that which is hard and abrupt. If there's two things to remember from balance i think those two words hard and abrupt are really good um, to remember of substances he rules iron and the regalia of clothing as a result of the ram and wine and legumes it is of the nocturnal sect the color red and pungent in taste so this translation is from chris brennan's hellenistic astrology page 174 to 176 so we can see a couple of things already with mars mars is things that are hot scary violent difficult um, and like fast moving and then hard and abrupt. And we also see, and we'll see this in Abu Mashar um, as well and in Lily, that Mars has this kind of um, like puffed up kind of arrogant quality to it. And we see that here in the regalia of clothing as a result of the ram. So Mars can be concerned with like status. Think of the way that like high ranking officers will have like all kinds of metal badges and like little symbols on them to denote rank. So Mars can be interested in things like hierarchies, domination, um, you know, authority, those kinds of things. Um, also kind of interesting, poor vision is one, but yeah, so we see Mars here is uh, things that like are people don't really like because they're violent. Saturn would be things that would be quote unquote malefic because they have this like waste in the way quality. They have this like decline in health, this like withering over time quality. Mars is like a car crash or like getting punched in the face or getting shot or something. Right. Um, think of like boxers or think of also like one of my favorite Mars, like professions, which is not always clear from the traditional sources. Although we do see uh, those who work with fire is like uh, chefs in a kitchen. Right. So I work, I, I deliver pizza. So I'm in a kitchen all the time. And if you ever worked in the kitchen or in a restaurant at all, it's very, very Martian. There's like a strict order of like who's in charge who's doing what, what kind of food is each person making? Um, and it has to be done right now. It's really, really hot and it's really demanding. It's like violent on the body, um, all those kinds of things. Um, so now we have uh, Firmicus. So he was a Roman writer in the um, like third or fourth century. Um, and he's really interesting. Schmidt will talk about him as like, he's writing for his friend who like saved his life one time. And he's like, as he's like being nursed back to health, he's like, I will write you an astrology book. And then in the book, he's like complaining about how long it's taking him. But uh, what Schmidt says is really interesting is that he makes no reference to Valens or Ptolemy um, or like anyone who's like between him and the original founders. He goes like right back to um, like the very earliest uh, portions of the tradition. So he's just a really interesting author and he did write in Latin. So he says, uh, and this is in a section where he's bringing each planet like through each house. So what I've done for each of these videos is put uh, whatever planet we're talking about in the first house. So if the ascendant is placed by night, this is important, 
in a domicile of Mars, namely in a masculine sign, and Mars was found in that same sign, i.e. in the Ascendant. Thanks, Vermicus. And Jupiter was with him partially, so by degree, in that same sign, or has aspected him with a solid aspect, so with a trine from Jupiter, or a sextile, it will make generals, but to those whom the whole army is committed, lords of life and death, and at whose approach cities and the greatest provinces shake with fear. They are fortunate, strong, severe, and those whose angers are always expressed with great indignations. But thus placed, it does not permit him to take delight with dear affection in either his spouse or his children. So um, I think that was all I wrote for Arbicus. So we see here Mars when it is like granting benefits. So we see Mars in the first house in a powerful place in a night chart of sect with help from Jupiter. He's given authority and status and he can like conquer the world, right? And this is something that we see in the tradition where whenever malefics are well-placed or offering help, they do it in this way that is characteristic of that planet. So like what would Mars have to give that is good? Mars can give strength and dominance and conquest and victory and honor and high command and authority and power, right? And like the power over life and death. Um, and there's this kind of like thrill and this um, like, uh, what's the word? Like intimidating and like foreboding quality, right? About Mars, but it's impressive and, you know, that kind of a thing. But Mars does not allow you to... Um, enjoy affection with your spouse or your children so it can be very hard and abrupt it's not very soft when uh mars is doing well you know you can think of it like a well-placed mars as like a good sports coach who is going to like push you to the limit um but to achieve something or to like gain victory or dominance in whatever um you're attempting to do um so that's firmicus um and then i think i meant to put a passage of like in a day chart but basically if mars is in a day chart it's much more problematic it will give like cowards and liars and and that kind of a thing um so abu mashar now is one of the earlier uh, arab writers so he's in the ninth century i want to say um and so he says and he indicates youth strength mental sharpness this is a, also one of my favorite um significations and we still you know we obviously use this today where we say someone uh is like clever or smart we say they're sharp right they're intelligent they have insight they're like cutting into things right um you'll use that word too like they have like a cutting intellect or something right uh so uh mental sharpness heat fires conflagrations that's just a big fire every matter occurring suddenly a king who has power and valor cavalrymen chief commander so cavalrymen that's sort of calling back to Valens also where um, about the four-footed animals and that kind of a thing. Um, so uh, cavalrymen, chief commanders, soldiers, the companions of the Sultan. That's also kind of an interesting one. Mars is, is never really the king, but he's like the right hand of the king. Um, oppression, coercion, war, killing, fighting, courage, hardiness, seeking glory, renown, and rank, the instruments of war, those entrusted with mobilizing wars, seeking retaliation, provoking discord, those, excuse me, those craving groups and splitting apart, warring with one another, becoming a thief, digging, stealing, highway robbery, haughtiness, risk-taking, and anger. Haughtiness is also one that I really love where, and you know, you'll see this where if there's like, a, um, like a, I'm thinking of if there's like a boxer or something who's like won a ton of times and he's like swaggering into the ring, and he's like, I know that I'm going to beat you because I'm so strong. That can be Mars. Like, I'm not even going to consider the fact that I might lose. I'm just so arrogant and like accomplished and strong that I'm going to win. That kind of thing. Um, regarding forbidden things as permissible, punishment, fetters, beating, imprisonment, restriction, running away, desertion, capture, prisoners, fear, conflict, injustice, anger, fury, recklessness, harshness, a coarseness of heart. I like that one too um foolishness stubbornness with scarce examination haste quickness in things daring bad in expression ugliness of speech and its coarseness and harshness indecency of the tongue revealing love and affection that's a really interesting one to me too but you know like the feeling of um you know you tell someone that you like them you like approach your crush or whatever and you're like hey that's like a bold 
thing to do right it takes daring it takes uh and it usually doesn't come out very well it usually comes out kind of like stammering and um that kind of a thing right um so revealing love and affection i think that's kind of an interesting thing glad tidings also another kind of interesting one uh extravagance in speech using wiles in answering quickly but with repentance in it afterwards so like saying something that you later regret saying something that's like like you know how many times have we been in fights where we say something like super clever or some really witty comeback and then we're like i shouldn't have said that that was like way too mean or something like that that's mars like interjecting into your life uh mars is also a scarcity of piety and scarcity of fidelity but an abundance of lying great sentence slander and debauchery swearing false oaths deception cunning bad works i don't know if that's supposed to be words a scarcity of good the undermining of suitable things an abundance of thoughts in matters that's also kind of an interesting one so mars has this like busyness and quickness to it uh, when you apply it to the mind it's like and that's not always a pleasant state, right? If you have like a ton of thoughts going in and out of your head all the time, that's not like a restful state. It can be kind of um, active and even violent. Uh, Mars is whims, independence of opinion from situation to situation, but quickly going back. An insolent look, little shame, an abundance of trouble and exertion, travels, exile, isolation, being a bad neighbor. That one I think is also really funny where... You know, you wouldn't want to live next to Mars because he's going to like steal all your shit um, and like make fun of you and, you know, be like throwing loud parties and these kinds of things. Fornication, ugly sexual intercourse, jokes, liveliness, excuse me, the movement which happens at the time of a woman giving birth, the labor pains of a pregnant woman, the death of women in pregnancy, the cutting of a child in the womb and the miscarriage of a fetus. And he indicates middle brothers, the management of riding animals, veterinary science, the protection of sheep, the treatment of wounds, the craft of iron, and working with it. Just saw a mouse run across my kitchen. The circumcision of boys, the desecration of tombs, and the robbing of the dead. So there's a lot here. This is a really long section, but I love Abu Mashar's way of describing things. Um, so again, we see Mars here as being like, reckless violent arrogant um interested in victory domination splitting things apart you know being sharp and dividing in the same way that like a knife is um and you know we'll even kind of say like when people have like grown apart we'll say there's like a wedge between them they're like something caught in between them and split them apart like abruptly find the mouse again um i should do something about that anyway digging stealing highway robbery um, there's one thing, a coarseness of heart. I really like this. Like you'll, we still have that phrase, like someone will be hard hearted um, or you have to like soften your heart. So we have Valens saying that Mars is hard and abrupt. Apply that to the heart. And then also that's in Firmicus as well. Um, will not permit him to delight with dear affection in either his spouse or his children. So there's this, this hardness that you can extend to a lot of different things. Um, and, it, and it really kind of illustrates itself uh, beautifully. So for Lily, uh, I did uh, the section where he describes when it's well dignified and when it's poorly dignified um, and like its effects on a person's uh, personality. And so by well dignified, it would mean like in Aries or Scorpio, in a night chart, on an angle or something like that, or in Capricorn, you know, so like in its own sign, in its exaltation, maybe in its bounds of sect, not combust, all these kinds of things when Mars is well placed. It says in feats of war and courage invincible, <clears throat> scorning any should exceed him subject to no reason bold confident immovable contentious challenging all honor to themselves valiant lovers of war and things pertaining thereunto. this mouse is bold man when i'm in the fridge um, anyway uh, willingly will obey nobody nor submit to any a large reporter of his own acts, one that fights all things in comparison of victory, yet of prudent behavior in his own affairs. So this is Mars when he's well-placed. He's uh, valiant. He is, uh, you know, invincible, courageous, confident, immovable, but he's like responsible. He's not like a complete asshole. He's not just fighting people in the street. He's, um, or maybe he is, but he's like, you know, you kind of like him and he's like a little rascal. Um, so that's well dignified. Those are the 
positives of Mars, right? And remember what I was saying earlier, when malefics give good things, they give it in the way that malefics would give it. So a good Mars is like a, the proper soldier or something like that, or defends the nation or uh, fights for the rights of others or that kind of a thing, sacrifices themselves and is honorable and is like not annoying to have around. When ill-placed, so this would be if Mars is not angular, if it's in the bad house, if it's in um, it's especially it's fall, if it's in like cancer or something or, you know, whatever, it doesn't have any dignity. It's got a, it's combust, all these things. Then he is a prattler without modesty or honesty, a lover of slaughter and quarrels, murder, thievery, a promoter of sedition. Sedition is like um, uprisings and um, like dissent phrase and commotions and high and a highway thief as wavering as the wind a traitor of turbulent spirit perjurer obscene rash inhumane neither fearing god or caring for man unthankful treacherous oppressors ravenous cheater furious and violent so this is the bad side of mars and they are ill-placed then they give um this sort of like unfettered destructiveness and violence um with Mars, especially, it can be very dramatic. Um, with Saturn, again, we'll see in a couple of weeks, Saturn can be like things that waste away and are cold and dry and have been sort of like devastated where, you know, if you think of like, um, uh, like how a country is like devastated from war, the initial like impact of the bombs or of the soldiers on the field of battle would be like Mars. And then sort of that longer period of where there's just like this sort of desolation can be more uh, related to Saturn. But so Mars, when he's well-placed, is just kind of an asshole. No modesty, no honesty, slaughter, quarrels, turbulent, perjurer. So he's a liar. He's obscene. He's just like generally <laughs> annoying to have around. He's like picking fights with everybody. Um, that kind of thing. So Mars in traditional astrology is the nocturnal malefic. Sometimes you'll hear the lesser malefic, where Saturn is the greater malefic. Uh, domicile ruler of Scorpio and Aries. So uh, Pluto is not related to Scorpio in traditional astrology exalted in capricorns have fallen in cancer is the night ruler so the primary ruler of the water triplicity and the cooperating ruler of the earthy triplicity has his joy in the sixth house of bad fortune i forgot to put a picture here mars indicates violence conflict strife bloodshed heat speed courage you can read all that um for like types of people mars could be like Brothers, soldiers, husbands, metal workers, chefs, criminals, thieves, laborers, shepherds, surgeons. Um, Mars is, like Malin said, anything that is hard and abrupt, right? And so this can be a bad thing when we need quiet family movie time. It can be a really good thing when we need to make a piece of iron, right? There was um, a astrology podcast forecast episode where Austin Kopik was saying pretty much this exact same thing where... Venus is really wonderful and sweet, but you can't like forge any useful piece of metal by like gently tapping on it and like putting it in the microwave for a minute. You know, you need like blasting fire and like immense strong blows to the metal, that kind of a thing. Um, <clears throat> and so we'll get into this later, but there's looking back from some of the modern authors, they have this view of Mars as like only violent or like only this sort of animalistic fury which as we see is not true um so like if we go back to abu mashar that does happen but it's like a king who has power and valor right chief commanders um hardiness courage glory renown rank it's not all bad things but the good things that mars gives come from martian things um just always important to keep in mind so that's Mars in traditional astrology. Um, again, I am a friend of Mars. I have a very Martian, very Martian chart. Um, so next we have modern sources. We're going to look at uh, Stephen Forrest. So Stephen Forrest says the function of Mars is the development of will. This idea of like the will is becomes very important in modern astrology. For Mars, the expansion of courage and quote assertiveness training. So like, can you stand up to people? Can you? Um, assert yourself the dysfunction would be touchiness rage selfishness insensitivity cruelty sadism bombast irritability and a quote chip on the shoulder so kind of similar to abu mashar right or to lily maybe 
where it's someone who's willful but is assertive and not like rageful and wrathful unnecessarily. The dysfunction would be someone who is. So key questions for Mars would be, what battles must I face? Where must I be more assertive if I am not to suffer pointless conflict and strife? How can I sharpen my will and how do I express my aggressiveness? All good questions. Um, so this is a quote that just to illustrate the point that I was making uh, a minute ago that I really just dislike. And this encapsulates a lot of uh, like the later 20th century um, like astrological thought looking backwards to the tradition where there's this like, oh, we have progressed in modern times. We're not so like crass and deterministic as these traditional astrologers and uh, therefore we are superior. Blah, blah, blah. Quote, the traditional astrologer's view of Mars harkens, harks back to the days when Chaldean priests would scramble to sacrifice a lamb whenever the red planet twitched. An utterly malefic influence in their eyes, they connect it strictly with unpleasantness, conflict, discord, hostility, terror. Those realities are Martian. No argument there. But to put them first is to miss the point. This mouse is freaking bold as a Martian mouse. Those realities are Martian, no argument there. But to put them first is to miss the point. Above all else, Mars symbolizes the power of the human will. This is the planet that gives us the steam to do what we please, to shape our own lives and to crush anything that stands in our way. So I do really like this sentiment where it's um, to imply for some reason that Mars is like only bad things is wrong. Um, but to, like we don't always need to be like, no, it's actually not violent. It's actually just the will is, in, in my opinion, a big mistake. Um, because the will, like willpower, is violent. And like violence itself isn't always, there's a spectrum of it being like more or less malefic. Um, but I, I just find this view of like looking back to traditional things as if we are like intellectually and spiritually superior because we don't sacrifice lambs whenever the red planet twitches. Um, I just, it leaves a really sour taste in my mouth. And I think we really need to stop doing that. Now, granted, this came out in the eighties and there's been a lot more traditional literature published since then, but um, just my two cents. So Richard Tarnas uh, in Cosmos and Psyche in 2006 says that Mars is the principle of energetic force, the impulse and capacity to assert, to act and move energetically and forcefully to have an impact, to press forward and against, to defend and offend to act with sharpness and ardor, the tendency to experience aggressiveness, anger, conflict, harm, violence, forceful physical energy to be combative, combative, competitive, courageous, vigorous, Ares, is the god of war. So this is a really nice sort of encapsulation of Mars as both something like the will, right? Which can be, um, you know, gives us things like ambition and invention and uh, like the strength to carry forward. Uh, it also has anger, conflict, harm, and villains, violence. Uh, so that I, I really like uh, Richard Tarnas. I really love Cosmos and Psyche. It's a great book. So now we have Ren Butler um, in 2018 in the Archetypal Universe saying, Mars is impulses toward action and assertion, energy and passion, the dynamic pursuit of goals and objectives, and urges to protect oneself in times of danger. So that would be like the positive side. The uh, more difficult or negative side would be tendencies towards selfish gratification, competitive drive, and excessive use of force, feelings of anger and aggression. The Mars archetype is behind our biological urges to take action and assert ourselves, to go out and participate in life, gratify our material and sexual needs, and protect ourselves during times of threat. It underlies our drives to pursue the things we want and to actively avoid the things and experiences we don't want. The negative qualities related to Mars, such as aggression, competition, and rash actions present many problems in the spiritual quest, tying up our attention in cycles of hurt and revenge, delaying the healing process. So this is a good encapsulation of the sort of like spiritual thought underlying um, some of modern astrology, where there's this uh, desire for things like balance in the chart where if we want to and it is relevant with Stephen Forrest as well where he has the dysfunction and the function and I think using this language as opposed to Lily's like 
when well dignified or when ill placed is uh has this implication of like we can do something about it and we should strive for balance between the different forces in our chart and if we're not doing that then like something is off or wrong um which is one way to look at things i think that would be a lot of people could balance out their mars a little bit um but uh so again the positive side of mars is that it protects us from dying it helps us have the energy to uh defend ourselves assert ourselves and like go out and take the things that we need from nature from other people from life right um, and then the negative is when that goes too far and we are too aggressive, competitive, rash um, in our actions and it ends up uh, causing more harm than necessary. It can be like indiscriminately harmful or um, uh, what's the word? Like inattentively, not inattentively, like not paying respect in the way that it harms things, right? It can be too, it can take too much um, and destroy too much. So Mars and modern astrology uh, tends to soften the descriptions of malefic planets uh, modern astrology does of both of the malefics especially saturn mars is i i'm kind of okay with how they talk about mars a lot of the time but saturn is like oof. um so modern astrology tends to really like to to change things from like uh to give the person more more agency right in their in their perception of a delineation where if mars is you know doing things in a person's chart they can do things about it more so um that's like more upfront. um and, you know, you see that in like the sixth house, which would be the joy of Mars has become rather than the house of bad fortune and the house of disease and injury and slaves. It has become the place of um, health, right? And work and like daily routines, which it's the same thing. But if we remember that like the sixth house, the reason we have to do these like daily routines to stay healthy is because of injuries and disease where the first house would be the place of health and the life. Uh, in modern astrology, Mars becomes the will, passion, sexual desire, sacrifice, vital energy, and like how a person moves through the world. So like their stance towards conflict in life, how they like tackle challenges, that kind of a thing. And, you know, you could say like, if someone has Mars and Aries, they're going to like run head on into life's challenges. They're going to just get them out of the way. No precautions, that kind of a thing. If they have Mars and Gemini, they're going to like use the mind and rationality and communication and speech and writing and technology and like kind of cleverly craft their way through the world like Odysseus would be or like MacGyver would be like a Mars and Gemini type of guy or um you know Mars in Libra would be might suggest a sort of um like diplomatic uh warfare or something you know something like that so uh Mars points to themes of conflict violence chaos aggression and strife Oop, I misread that. So themes of conflict, violence, chaos, aggression, and strife are remarkably consistent throughout the tradition. I think this is the planet where things have changed probably the least. And it, a lot of it is because Mars is really straightforward. Mars is violence, you know, and we still say things like we're seeing red, right? When we're um, feeling violent. Um, but yeah, so that is Mars in modern astrology. Um, and that's just kind of the difference that it's undergone throughout the course of the tradition. And as usual, things kind of tighten up a little bit and become a little bit more narrow because the focus of astrology has narrowed over time. It's less about um, identifying things necessarily in the external world or identifying people's professions or answering uh, questions about the future. And it's more about like internal drives and, and the state of the psyche, the state of the mind. Um, and so Mars, when Mars moves from out there where it represents like instruments of war, uh, fires, kitchens, iron, smiths, thieves, highway robbers, and moves into the self. It represents the will, aggression, um, uh, that kind of thing. So for work cited here, we have Chris Brennan's Hellenistic Astrology, the Study of Fate and Fortune, Firmicus's Mathesis. I have the James Holden translation. Um, Charles Obert's The Classical Seven Planets, Source, Text, and Meanings is where I got Abu Mishra and Lily. Stephen Forrest, The Inner Sky, Richard Tarnas, Cosmos and Psyche, Ren Butler's The Archetypal Universe, and there are four astrology podcast episodes um, that are relevant to Mars. There's a lot of forecasts too where they mention Mars. Um, but we have episode 64, The Significations of the Seven Traditional Planets, episode 70, The Astrology of Mars Retrograde Periods, will be pretty important to listen to if you see this like right as it comes out, because Mars will uh, station like days after I release this. Um, 
episode 173 michelle and francois gokulin on the mars effect pardon my french this is something that i didn't really mention i probably should have but they basically did this study in the 80s i think of studying athletes um which is something i didn't mention at all mars is 100 percent rules athletes you know, think of like vigorous competition um they were trying to do like a statistical study of astrology to validate it and they found the mars effect where there's certain zones of the chart where uh famous athletes are more likely to have Mars placed. That's kind of interesting. Um, and then episode 318, Mars and astrology meanings and significations. Um, so again, the point of this presentation is not to uh, like dunk on modern astrology or, you know, whatever. Um, it's really just to expand our vocabulary. If you are someone who has studied a lot of traditional astrology, it's good to know what the modern astrologers are doing and what they're thinking. It's you know, they have good ideas. And for modern astrologers, it's vitally important to understand what the tradition is, where it's been, where the ideas that we use in modern astrology now come from. Um, and it will help sharpen your um, skills and delineations, right? Mars term. Um, so if you want to support the channel, um, I have a Patreon, I have um, Twitter, that kind of a thing. Um, and I also have a study group where we are reading Demetri George's Ancient Astrology and Theory and Practice Volume 2. Uh, we are going to meet at the last Wednesday of every month, and we're going to have practicum sort of bonus sessions on the, I think, second Saturdays. Um, so if you want to join that, all the links for that will be down below. Uh, on Patreon, I do like weekly forecasts. You get early access to new videos and uh, bonus, some like bonus monthly forecast things. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.